What's going on, Paisanos? V here. Come at you guys. Well, with another Marker Watch today. You know, I feel like the game is, for the most part, stale right now, competitive-wise. I mean, we know what's the best decks. We know what's the decks underneath that. And then we know the rest of the decks underneath that as well. And I really feel like, uh, hopefully soon, we'll have some new cards coming into the game that's going to really change things up. And I think that's going to be happening. Of course, we have the reprints coming out of the gold set. As well as the new set coming out soon, that's going to have a lot of new cards that we can use. And then, hopefully, after that, we're going to get a ban list on time, hopefully. Uh, and then we're going to really see things change. And I think that's going to be really interesting. And in this video, we're going to talk about a bunch of cards that have a bunch of crazy value. And at the end of the video, i got a special card I want to show you guys. You might not, you might know it already. You might have seen it in the thumbnail. Who knows? If you guys are new to the channel, please make sure to subscribe button, like button, and comment down below. Comment question of the day. You just got promoted to be in charge of Konami. What are you going to do to change things up? I mean, choose one thing. If you want to hear what I'm going to do if I was if I was in charge of Konami to change things up for the better of the game, stay tuned to the end of this video. Guys, Gyusu the Orcus Mechna. Coming out of Eternity Code, a $25 market price is still roughly around $25, almost year 26 despite the fact that this card has been doing almost nothing in the meta. Don't get me wrong, there's different variants that splash Gyusu in, but for the most part, the card is just useless. I remember the announcement of this card, everyone went crazy going, wow, Orcus is going to be insane, and they hit Hope Harbor, and there goes that. Listen, I think this card is still worth a lot of money, and I really don't know why, and I really feel like this card should be a card that's going to be a good sell for a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh players. If you're looking to get rid of this card, you might want to do it fast, because, let's be honest with you, I don't think Orcus are doing anything anytime soon, and as far as Mech Knights, well, they're nice. <laughs> Up next, Lightning Storm. This card coming in addition to was roughly around $115 for the longest while. Look at the current market price, it's roughly around $95. Then you go over here and find the unlimited copies at around $92. In fact, if you want a first generation version, you'll look to pay almost near $96 for Lightning Storm. Once again, coming in addition to sort. And this card is amazing. I mean, it really is. And the question is, when's this card going to get a reprint? Well, hopefully Maximum Gold, probably not though. Hopefully, you know. Uh, a good substitute for this card would be more than likely uh, Evenly Match. would probably be the best substitute. Even though I personally prefer Lightning Storms over Evenly, if you don't have that option, Evenly is still a phenomenal card to use. It's not as expensive. And you know what? Banishing your opponent's monsters face down, all your opponent's cards face down, it's good times to me. <laughs> Up um, next, guys, we have Ignisters. Now, I every now and then I like to talk about like deck cores because I feel like a lot of people just kind of forget about them. Kind of like Ignisters. Remember when if, with the news of Ignisters covers coming out, everyone freaked out. There was so much hype, and then it did nothing. Like a lot of nothing. But it still held good value when it first came out out of Ignition of Sword. I think these initial cards are cards you might want to pick up right now. Yes, they're doing nothing, but they're a really dirt cheap deck core. Both the secret rares are under $2, and it's the only printing. Um, also, if you want the field spots, it's going to run you a little bit more for Inisters. Uh, I think it's Inister AI Land. That'll run you roughly around $7. Um, but for the most part, the core of Inisters is relatively inexpensive, and I definitely think it's something that you might want to consider picking up if you're looking to pick up deck cores. Sorry if I talk too fast. I'm trying to get everything here done and, and compress it into a nice short term package, but it doesn't work out all the time. Okay. Unchained. Unchained in general. Listen, they got a bunch of reprints, and if you want the reprint on chain, I don't blame you. I actually own a reprinted on chain decor. Decor cost me, I think, like $10, and I got ripped off. But if you want, like, secret versions of cards, like on chain Soul of Rage, it's only $4. If you want the secret on chain Soul of Anguish, once again, secret rare, it's a dollar. On chains are relatively inexpensive, and despite the fact that the deck really hasn't done much as far as the meta, it is still a really good rogue deck to play. I actually enjoy this deck a lot, and will look forward to, well, depends if you want to get these Starlight Rare Ru House, which I kind of want to get them, but at the same time, it's, you know, it's $300. <laughs> Higher than the $200 market price. Anyway, looking at chain for the most part, for the most part, it's relatively inexpensive. Just like in Nisters, um, except it sees a little bit more play than in Nisters. That's basically what it is. Then we have Adjustment God Slime. Coming in at the Legendary Duelist Rage of Ra $22 market price, the card's roughly around $20 to $21. For Egyptian God Slime, this card does nothing. <laughs> but it shows a picture of Abba, so collectors go ahead and run and grab it. What? Hard printing, you say? Maybe. Maybe it's hard to get, but collectors don't care. If they want it for their collection, they're gonna get it. That's probably why this card maintains any kind of value. What I don't understand, though, is how is Code Radiator coming out of Fist of the Gadget so worth anything? The card's holding an $8 market price, and it's almost near $8 on the market. I mean, Lightning Plate First Edition versions are roughly around 7 and then it quickly starts going up to near $8 for Code Radiator. Seriously, what does this card do? I'm not going to read it. Just tell me, is it going to be good in the future chat? 
Paisanos, everyone in the comments just down below. I don't know who to ask. I have zero idea. Facebook, Twitter. Uh, so hit me up on my beeper. Like, let me know why is this a good card. I don't understand it. This card should not be v valued as high as it currently is. And if anyone's holding this card, no, seriously, why are you holding this? Like, sell it. Then we have Thunder Dragon Colossus coming out of OTS Tournament Pack 10 with a $53 market price. Well, the card's roughly around 56 then 56 then 60 and then $65. And then it quickly goes up to $70 for Ultimate Rare Thunder Dragon Colossus out of OTS Tournament Pack 10. Now, listen. I think a lot of you good players are going to say the same exact thing. Well, V, if you make Colossus the one, everyone will splash cards into their deck to, to use Thunder Dragon Colossus. No, it's not going to happen. Let's be real. A lot of decks right now are currently tight, and to add more cards in to bring out Thunder Dragon Colossus wouldn't be as big of a deal for a lot of players. Um, it's just the card's good, but the card's slowly being phased out as far as the meta is. I know that's a crazy issue to say right now, but give it more time. Thunder Dragon Colossus, despite the fact that it's a phenomenal card, is not that good as time goes on. And as we get more and more and more and more into time, it gets less good. And I kind of want to play the card before it's kind of irrelevant. I mean, don't be wrong. Some people might go, well, V, Colossus will break the meta. Um, hi, I'm not sure if you know the history, but Prank Kids getting a new Link 1. The deck's probably going to be Tier 1, Prank Kids. Look at Dungeon Dragon Colossus. Dungeon Dragon players in general, tell them about Prank Kids. <laughs> Prank kids before the Link one used to slap this deck around. Now they're going to be the top dog, and somehow Thunder Dragon Colossus is banned? Kind of weird to think about it that way. I think that Thunder Dragon, Dragon, Dragon players should get Thunder Dragon Colossus back. Let me get a fighting chance against Prank kids before Prank kids beat the ever loving snod nah, that deck. Don't get me wrong, I love my Thunder Dragons, but Prank kids for life. And I want to see Thunder Dragon Colossus come off the ban list. I think it should come off the ban list. And I think a lot of people agree with me as the reason why this card is increasing higher and higher in the market. Way higher than its current market price of $53. So, Trickstar Candina. Any version of the card is about at least 4 bucks. The 2018 Megaton version with the $5 market price is currently on sale for 3 bucks, And then it's back to $5. By the time you're watching this video, that card's probably gone. I just want to let you know I didn't buy it. I don't play Tricksters. I want to... Have fun in Yu-Gi-Oh! and interact a little bit. Not that draw lock for reincarnation in 2020. Not my uh, slice of pie. And then you got the original print version of Trisha Candina. Once again, three dollar market price. Yeah, no, it's not that. In fact, it's five and then seven dollars immediately out there. Which if you want the original print version, if you want the version coming out of the common version, stock pack Rains, well, three dollar market price. But with shipping and whatnot, it's just about bought out. The card's actually roughly around five bucks for a Trickstar Candina. I don't really know why this won't much money. I have zero idea. I mean, don't get me wrong. Max Rarity Trickster is nice. Sure. It's like Max Rarity Sky Strikers. Don't mean I'm going to go and play them or go and collect them. Well, maybe not now. Eventually, I might do that. And think a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh players have that kind of mentality. But I feel like some Yu-Gi-Oh players are jumping the gun faster than a lot of others. Zodiac is looking to be really good with Zodiac Tri Brigade. And not just like Zodiac Tri Brigade, but Zodiac right now is kind of pretty good. I mean, it's a really good mid-range deck that nobody talks about, but everyone has to deal with. Look at Zodiac Ch uh, Chaka 9, original print acts out of Maximum Crisis. It used to be around $13, which is still relatively high. Yeah, no, a limited version of the card is roughly around $18. And the name of first version, version of the card is at also $18 for Zodiac Chaka 9. This card should be getting a reprint next month in the goats, in, in the in the Maximum Gold, uh, Premium Infinite Ultimate Gold. But we don't really know what's going to happen. We don't know if that linked list is true or not. I think it is, but we have to see. Then we have uh, Zodiac Thoroughblade, original print coming out of Raging Tempest, four dollar market price. Slightly played for certain versions, hitting near seven dollars. Seven dollars for Zodiac Thoroughblade. I'm not even gonna look at Whiptail. That price is insane. Then of course you got the Ulti Tankies. No, let's go check out Ulti Tankies in a second. Uh, by the way, if you're looking at the 2017 Megatons Mega Pack uh, Zo uh, Zodiac Thoroughblade with almost a six dollar market price, it's almost bought out as well. Okay, so we're gonna go over here look at Tankies because. If everyone's going to be going crazy for Zodiacs, obviously the money card's going to be Tankies and Whiptails. That's basically what's going to be. Look at an Ultimate 5 Fiction Tanky with an $82 market price. I don't think it, it, it held that value that long, to be honest with you. I remember it being around $120. Oh, by the way, real quickly. Um, after this Tanky sells out at $120, which is only one listing for one, the next copy of 5 Fiction Tanky Ultimate Rare is $160. $160. Wow. <laughs> um... Okay, so let's go to Zodiac. Um, I forgot which one it was already. My memory already forgot. Okay, Whiptail. Yeah, I said Whiptail. Okay, Zodiac Whiptail at OTS Thunder Pack 5 Ultimate Rare with a $52 market price is, well, 57 In fact, it's 57 58 59 60 
60, 60, 65. It's not bad in value, to be honest with you. Don't get me wrong. This card's still very expensive. And I'm with you on, on that. I think the minute ZDX die again and again and again, and hopefully this time they stay dead, uh, we'll tell them more than likely to go back down to roughly around $20. Well, hopefully. That's the hope. Realistically, since the card was originally at $20 and went up to $60, it will probably have a new setup price, which will be in the, between that range. It's not going to sell it back to $20. It's not going to stay at $60. It will probably stay roughly around the $40 range if I had to take a wild guess. Don't get me wrong, Zodiac Whiptail is, is a great card, and I think Zodiacs are always going to see some kind of random rogue play. But with Tri Brigades coming out, it's going to make this deck a lot more viable than what it currently is. And it's kind of currently pretty viable. I mean, it's kind of the original version of what Prank Kids coming out next month with the new Link 1 wants to be. A one card, I do a bunch of summons off this one card. The, the dot deck. That's basically what we're seeing here with Zodiacs, and that's basically what we're going to see with Prank Kids. Why is Subterra Behemoth Umastrix going up in value? I mean, yeah, I guess because it came out of Dark Illusions, only printing, $7 market price, and it's roughly around $8. Okay, I'm sold. I'll take five. No, I'm joking. This card's a one of, and the fact that it's $8 is kind of hilarious to me. I have no idea why it's much money, and uh, yeah. Subterra players. Okay. Up next, Rave Up the Core. Coming out of Ring Rage is actually worth a couple of bucks. Check your dollar binders because this might be worth something. Rave Up the Core with an almost an $8 market price is still roughly around $7. Now, can this card get reprinted? Of course. Should it be reprinted? Yes. Will it be reprinted? We don't know. We have zero idea. And because of that, Rave Up the Core is currently a $7 Ultra Rare out of Wing Raiders. By the way, if you want to find an old card that looks really cool, Dried Winds, original print out of Clash of Rebellions, the only version, by the way, super rare, with $11 market price, well, that's roughly around 10 to almost near $11 for a super rare. Once again, that dollar binder at your locals has a lot of gems in it. You're going to go and buy cards for dollars that are worth $10, $11, and Dried Winds another one of those cards. Keep an eye out for this card. Put a dollar in, get 10 bucks back, it's a pretty good deal. I keep harping on cards like Legendary Dragon and White and Legendary Magician and Dark. We'll talk about that in a second. But Legendary Dragon and White with a $61 market price is roughly around $66, almost near $67. People are going, well, V, why is that? Easy, collectors. Listen, the collector's market is real and real crazy. I mean, don't get me wrong. Legendary Dragon and White looks like a cool card to have in your collection, including Legendary Magician and Dark, another great card to have in your collection. But, um, is it $65 great card to have in your collection? No, not, not even close. But collectors don't really care about playing the game. They just put money in because they want to get stuff for their deck, and that's the end of the situation. Well, looking at this card, obviously, they're going to buy this one out. Want to see me do like, my psychic powers again? Is it tele telekinesis? Telekin whatever. So, Want to see supernatural mental abilities? Legendary Magician of Dark currently $28, which is roughly around $27, almost near $28. It's going to be hitting $60 as well. Why not? Sure. I think this card easily can. In fact, I think Legendary Dragon and White, Legendary Mission Dark are undervalued. All right, so here's the part of the video in which I talk, talk to you about something. I think you guys are growing up enough. You guys, you know, starting to feel a little funny, you know, in the tummy whenever you see a young lady around, you get all excited. And you go, what should I do, Dad? I mean, I, I, I like Mary, but we used to play when we were kids, and now I kind of want to smell her hair, Dad. Okay, it's creepy, but sure, okay. You should look, probably look to getting your Max C's. <laughs> Max C's is what you need to get. Listen, right now in the meta, a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh players are having a lot of problems with a lot of decks. I think we can all agree on that. Dragon Link is an issue, and we should not ignore it for what it is. In fact, some might say Inferno Nobles. Sure, I guess so. I'm, maybe because I'm part team Inferno Noble, but whatever. These are two problematic decks in the game. People are suggesting Banless Hits. Well, how many Banless Hits would you need to end those, both of those decks? I mean, we could talk about Crystal Nita Fiber, we could talk about Link Cross, we could talk about Smoke Grenade, we could talk about Guard Dragon LP. We could talk about a lot and a lot and a lot and a lot of cards. And we could just slap those in, in, in our imaginary mind on the, uh, you know, if we were Konami, take them off the ban, put them on the ban list, and be done with them and go, there, we did it. We, we put like five cards in the ban list for two decks. Success! Realistically, that's not going to happen. In fact, what, more, what seems more likely and more plausible as time goes on. Is the fact that Maxi comes with a balance. Once again, you're a Dragonling player. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm a Dragonling player. You're playing against me. I'm, I'm about to special summon cards. You drop Maxi. I pass turn and get bodied. <laughs> or I'm in for an open night player. My best play, at best, I can slide five cards out of your hand. Right now, that's pretty detrimental. Okay? Fast forward with Maxi, I lose. No, seriously. Play against the Nobles and let him put an ISO on board and pass turn. How badly are you going to smack that deck? Play against Dragon Links. But let him put um, 
Let him put anything on board and just pass turn. What's the um, Romulus? Let him put Romulus on board and then pass turn. Will you? Could you smack him? Would you body that deck right then and there? Of course you would. No Banless hits. Why? Think about it. If Dragon League gets full combo, how many cards in your hand can you use to not only break their board, but kill them the following turn? In fact, let's flip it real quickly. If you're playing against decks like, I don't know, Infernobles that try to take at least five cards in your hand at best, that's the most ideal situation they can do. They'll probably have no cards in their hand, but they got five of your cards. How many cards can Maxi get you to beat them next turn? I'm going to guess a lot. And Maxi does a lot of different things, because now we see a weird thing happening as far as this card. And we'll talk about prices in two seconds, I, I promise you. But looking at Maxi, um, I'm just going to throw, throw it out there. Maxi makes cards, like Forbidden Droplet, $100 cards. And some of you might go, well, V, that's kind of expensive. I want to save money. I want everything to be a nickel. I know. I know. Maybe we'll get a reprint. <laughs> it's not going to. It just came out of Rising Deals. What are you insane? Listen, Forbidden Droplet is going to be going up in value. Of course it is. I think it's going to be a main two, maybe even a side one, if Maxi was to come to three. Why would it not be? Think about it. If you play against your opponent and you and they take the Maxi Challenge playing Dragon Links and you draw your Forbidden Droplets, how many do you need to body your opponent? That's right. You just need one. You go, you take your hand, which is like probably like this big, and you go Forbidden Droplet, and then you shuffle to your hand like it's an index. If, if, if you're older, you know what an index is. If you're young, don't ignore what I just said. But this is the noise that makes. <laughs> and then you just grab out like random cards. You start popping them bad boys in the graveyard. Your opponent has a board of monsters with half their attack effects blanked out, all because you dropped Max Z. I was talking to my buddies uh, about this last night. They were saying, well, wait a minute, V. What if you're playing dra against Dragon Link and you're playing Dragon Link? Oh, I don't care about combo decks. Don't get me wrong. I love combo decks. It's really fun to play, and I enjoy them a lot. I'm here for the mid-range decks, even more so for the control decks that just didn't have been doing nothing. Seriously, when was the last time a control deck was tier one? Take your time. Okay, now we're done with that. We're just, it's just, okay. More, more or less mid-range decks. I'm talking like Elric Variants, uh, Invoked Variants, uh, Dogmatic Variants. Those players playing those decks will have a huge advantage and will be seen as tier one against Dragon Links, Infernobles, Prank Kids maybe? And every other deck under the sun. It makes your opponent that plays heavy combo have to create a subpar board. Some of, some of you guys go, well, V, that will kill combo decks. Hi, my name is Nibiru. Perhaps we met. I um, initially killed combo decks when I came out. Uh, had a drinking problem. Got reprinted into Ultimate Rare. And uh, yeah. Hi. <laughs> Listen, combo decks are going to be just fine. In fact, if you want to know how bad it was to be a combo player... Ask combo players playing when Maxi was at three. They were just like, yep, this is the format we're in. This is the cards we play. And I think that's something really unique to understand. The fact that every format we have in Yu-Gi-Oh! is a unique format because it's the only time we're going to be able to play this format with this card pool. Think about it. The cards, the, the game, the, the, the rulings, and the ban list is only happening for a very short amount of time. I asked a common question at the beginning of the video, and I said, if you were promoted to head of Konami for just a day, what would you do? Why would you change? And one thing I would change is how Konami communicates to the community in order to further promote the game. That's a huge issue. That's almost, I mean, I think getting new players in should be like right onto that, but that's probably the biggest issue. Konami hates negative feedback. It's like you have a, you have a neighbor out there and you go, oh, nice car, Jim. And he goes, oh, thanks. And then you have a neighbor out there and let's say he hit a deer next day and you go, hey, Jimmy, you hit a deer. And he's like, oh, and he runs inside, slams the door. <laughs> that's Konami. That's actually Konami. Hey, Konami, good stuff you did there. Oh, thank you. Oh, you know. Hey, Konami, um, it's got a quick question. You reprinted a structure deck and you didn't put like cards like evenly match. I should have been in the structure deck. You just didn't put it in there and you're going to try to sell it to us. That's kind of crappy. Duh, negative feedback. And they just run. I would create a better com a better way to communicate through the community, obviously with other content creators, with the YouTubers, but specifically, not just with YouTubers, with the community themselves. I'm not trying to use YouTubers as a, 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 um, a speaker, but more or less something to be with me on. But at times, I would, if I was Konami once again, I would find a better way to get c communicate. I would have my PR to date, baby. I would have my Twitter looking like Wendy's Twitter with all them dope ass uh, 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 responses. I would have my Facebook set up to, to keep talking about product, keep talking about cards, getting players thinking, getting people move, you know, brains going on because you can promote a new card every day and talk about the card. Not just like in a weird like, well, you see, this card's a very interesting card. No, like, so it's good cards. Like Forbidden Droplet. Forbidden Droplet has the potential to be a really good card in the future of the game. Have something like that. Create that conversation. Ask a question. And I don't know, if I was Konami, I would run more better events like remote duels and promote that because that's really good 
If you're using play watching this video and you think your emotes are gonna go away, you're sadly mistaken. You just found uh, OTS store just found an additional way to make a uh, uh, additional source of income, which they desperately need. Konami found a way to have more players play their game because players that live in remote areas don't want to drive two hours to locals. No problem. You got a webcam. You got an iPhone. You got a way to play Yu-Gi-Oh, and you still get OTS packs. Remote duels is a huge deal, and that's going to also be something that needs to be worked on. On, but once again, this is several things that would happen. My number one thing would definitely be forming a better response from the company and the TCG uh, to the players, and not a, a snarky "I'm better than you" kind of response. No, like an actual response. Talk to the players as if they were crackheads, and you're the drug dealer, and we want to buy crack, but and you want to sell us, uh, uh, your drugs, okay? But you got to realize the fact there's a lot of other drug dealers out there. So you're not trying to go like, man. No, you're trying to do that. You're just trying to have that conversation. This is probably another reason why I kind of heard the market watch because I want to get to this point. You want to have that conversation. And then when we get negative feedback, all you do is just, well, ignore it. <laughs> Simple. It's it's almost insane. If you want to know how to deal with negative feedback, Konami, go to my comments section sometimes when I get negative feedback. I just keep going. Sometimes I delete the comment if it, if it, if it annoys me. I go, oh, that's a really mean thing to say. Comment deleted. Remove the guy from the channel and keep going. Why not? Open up your chat communications when you have a live stream so that people in the TCG can actually conversate amongst each other. Negative or positive. It's something that people want to be excited about. And just get the game rolling like that. I think it's a better way to do it. That's it. Very simple. <laughs> anyway, I really appreciate you guys for my videos. Oh, max these listings. Um, don't worry about these. No, seriously. I mean, unless you want the max rarity, max C, ultimate rare, coming out of Astro Pack 4, $367 market price. No, it's on sale. $345. And then it, you got a time for $350. And then it's $375. By the way, as this gets closer to the balance, the price will rise up higher in value. Just throwing it out there because anyone doesn't think that's going to happen. Max C's will at least be $500 by the time we're near our balance. So I wouldn't be surprised if it hits that number. Listen. If, don't go ahead and buy the common super rare maxis. Wait for the premium goat set to come on, see if we get a reprint. And if we don't get a reprint, see what's gonna happen between then, when the premium goat set comes out, when the spoilers comes out, and by the time we have the ban list in December, if there's any kind of reprint sets and what can be done. Because I do believe maxis should be it should be due for a reprint. The last reprint I had was in Structure Act Machine Reactor, which was a couple of years ago. So I'm really confident in the fact that we would see a maxi reprint in the future. Any points on I really appreciate you guys watching my videos. Please make sure to subscribe and subscribe and hit the like button. Comment down below. Let me know what you do if you were Konami. And you guys have a great day.